So, welcome everybody. Um, I labeled my talk from simple to complicated and back. And I did so because recently I experienced this anecdote. No, that's, that's, I forgot to record, sorry. Okay, okay. let's pretend this never happened. Yeah, let's pretend this never happened. <laughs> that's all. Hello, my name is Simon, I'm a good guest. <laughs> I'm working here at Königsweg and I wanted to share an anecdote with you that reminded me of something very important recently and I think it's especially important after hearing so many interesting talks with new insights. The whole story starts with this innocent little chat. So Alex is writing to me, hey, I have this nice little optimization problem, do you by any chance have time? Let's see what's about. <laughs> and Alex tells me we are having a team event in about a week and we need a seating order which is constructed in a way that two people can change places and are never situated next to each other over the course of the meal. So starter, you have different neighbors, then main and so on and so forth. Sounds doable for 17 people, sounds okay. What is a little bit problematic is what happened in my brain between these two messages from Alex. It went something like this. Optimization problem. I think I heard about this recently. Oh yes, I had this algorithmics class. And I never really came around to applying what I learned there. What would it look like if I applied this theoretical stuff to this little problem at hand? And then I started to overcomplicate things quite a lot. Actually, I was wondering, do we care for the head seats? I inquired, answer is no, we don't care, we don't do head seats. Then I was wondering, what actually constitutes a neighborhood relationship? Is it only direct neighbors, or is it diagonal neighbors? <laughs> In the end, we went for direct neighbors, who could have guessed. Then, optimization problem, so we need a function to optimize. I came up with the following. So basically, if your neighbor has been your neighbor in one of the previous courses, we assign a value of one, we sum over all seats, we sum over all different time steps, and because this wasn't complicated enough, and by here I should have known, I started to wonder about optimization constraints, because every good optimization problem needs some constraints. And then I realized, darn, it has to be a set of integers, it has to be a fixed set of integers, which are mutually exclusive, and I have no goddamn idea how to do this. So I did what most people do, took a break. So I went for a cup of tea and it has been during Corona, so in the tea kitchen I met my mother. And I'm telling her, hey, I have this cool little problem I want to solve, and this and this fancy methodology, and my mother really is not into this methodology. So I bought the shit out of her, and at one point she told me, why don't you just move this side of the table in this direction, and this side of the table in this direction. And here's a pretty accurate depiction of me when she said that. Because <laughs> basically she was right. I overcomplicated the whole thing immensely. So I had to get rid of my beautiful little unicorn optimization problem. And took another 20 minutes to come up with the final solution to this problem, which was basically move one side of the table by two and you can still see we have overlapping neighborhoods so we can just switch every second seat across the table. So that's the solution in the end and it demonstrated one important thing to me. Keep your mind focused on the problem. It's not about the method in the first place, it's about the problem in the first place. What I did unconsciously here is I switched the problem from seat 17 people around the table and do it in kind of a nice way to apply all of this fancy optimization stuff that you always wanted to do. And it took me actually nowhere. So try to keep in mind that the simple solution is most likely to get you most of the way and be pragmatic. And because I'm pragmatic, I also want to mention that tea time and coffee time is an immensely valuable resource, and I'm stopping right now. <laughs> Thank you very much.